Hello, St. Mary Magdalene. Thanks for tuning into this week's video with me, Father Chris. I'm filming from the Rectory Chapel with a beautiful statue of the Sacred Heart here next to me. So it's uh, one of the ones from uh, the Holy Land. So it's made out of olive wood and a beautiful uh, statue that sits in the chapel where I sit and pray with it every day. And how beautiful then to be able to be with you on this Feast of the Sacred Heart. Thank you for your prayers while I was away the last two Fridays. I was on a little vacation, uh, so I thank you for your prayers. It was a beautiful, restful time. I went with a couple of brother priests. We actually went and uh, toured Nashville, and uh, I'm a huge fan of country music, and so going to the motherland of country music, so to speak, was a beautiful gift for me and just a very rejuvenating time. Uh, and yes, I did have a bunch of Nashville hot chicken, and it was delicious. But the Feast of the Sacred Heart, a beautiful feast, a beautiful opportunity for us to reflect upon God's love and how it's made manifest. And it's so perfect, it's so pure, it's so good. It can oftentimes be overwhelming. You know, I remember in seminary and under some spiritual direction and just being invited to really ponder and contemplate and pray over how intimate and how pure is God's love for me, that it can be overwhelming the first time we really encounter God's love and just how can the Lord love me this way? How can his love be that good? How can he forgive me for all the things I do? How in the world can I be loved this much? Those are beautiful and powerful questions and good questions to reflect on and pray over. And it's true. It's true. We are loved that deeply, that perfectly, that intimately. And that's what the Sacred Heart is, this beautiful feast, this opportunity to reflect and to truly see his heart is willing to be pierced and give everything for you and for me, for us. What a beautiful gift. It's so contrary, though, to what we experience more often than not on a daily basis in our fallen, broken world with with without a proper understanding of what genuine, authentic love looks like. And so how beautiful then that the church gives us this opportunity, this day of the Sacred Heart, to see what perfect love looks like. Him. He is perfect love. He loves you perfectly, and he loves me perfectly. Tomorrow then, to Saturday, we have the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And what does the perfect love of a disciple look like? Like, you know, Christ gives himself, pours himself out for us. And Mary receives that and offers herself back. And she is the disciple par excellence, the model of the church and a discipleship. And so we pray then that on this feast of the sacred heart, we may receive God's love and allow it to imbue and fill our own hearts, minds, and souls. And then with the immaculate heart, coupled with that, that we then may return an act of love through Our Lady's intercession and through the power of God's grace and our love for Him, but that we may offer ourselves back in a beautiful Marian fashion. So, two powerhouse feasts to celebrate, the Sacred Heart and the Immaculate Heart, but both reminders for us that we are loved beyond imagining, beyond anything we can understand or experience or comprehend, and it's not a love we should run away from. As frightening and as sometimes even overwhelming as it can be, we should embrace it and love it and just give thanks for it so powerfully and so perfectly. So, happy Feast of the Sacred Heart and happy Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, you sent your Son, Jesus, to save us from our sins, to remind us and manifest for us your perfect love, your love that is pure, infinite, life-giving, forgiving, healing, reconciling, all these beautiful things, merciful too. Help us in the face of your pure and perfect, merciful love for us. Do not run away or to be afraid, but to, in great joy and in humility and just in a movement of love as best as we can return to receive this great gift and offer ourselves back to you. May your perfect love cast out any and all fears, all hesitations and anxieties, that we may abide forever in your love. 
who has called us through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great week, and I will see you on Sunday.